We're going to uh, start with the twist sweep. This is known by a couple different names. Some people call it the John Wayne sweep. I think some people call it the giggler sweep. The essence of the mechanism is, in particular for those uh, of us that are playing the uh, like, you know, low knee shield or, or high knee shield, when somebody starts to move past our legs, if we are able to connect our knees together, so we have a really strong lever mechanic here. So Stefan, if you start to come forward like you're going to underhook me, that's the twist. And it looks super fake <laughs> when you do it because it looks like a person just kind of falling over for you. So let's break down the actual mechanism, which is pretty similar to, if you can just lean a little bit forward, it's pretty similar to what we're doing where we do the knee torque, but rather than affecting this lever, so down here from like the ankle to the shin, we're more just affecting this lever. So we're immobilizing the knee by planting our feet kind of to the side of this while our shins and knees pitch the opponent's hip over a base that is not able to extend. So if we turn this way a little bit, as long as I've got a strong hook with my half guard, like we talked about at the beginning, you shouldn't be able to extend your leg out. And when I reinforce it now by taking the, the top leg that would have been doing whatever version of the knee shield I want, and I bring my feet together, provided your weight is starting to come forward, I can twist you. If you sit back heavy on your hips, it's almost impossible unless you have a significant size and strength advantage to move someone. But if I can induce you to thinking it's a good idea, come forward with an underhook as your weight twists, you put your center of gravity under my control, I can find my underhook on the way up and move directly into a guard pass. Or worst case scenario, I just end up on top of your half guard. This can also be done quite effectively from the situation we discussed at the beginning of the series where we gain this two on one grip and we pull somebody into our half guard because I've got your weight coming forward and I've got your post, I can twist you. So really any version of the two on one grip or it can be done in the opposite fashion where I'm already playing half guard and I gain this two on one grip either at the wrist or at the elbow and I start pushing you and then as you recover your weight backwards against the push to defend against the obvious back attack that's being created by this angle, I'm gonna be able to take advantage of that momentum. So anything that I do that gets you to start to shift your weight forward or significantly to the side while I perform this clamp, knees together, feet together, and again, without you there, I'm just, I'm just doing that. And as I rotate you over, I just have to be able to rock up onto my elbow and immediately seek my underhook the last few times I've done this in sparring, it was against, I started with a high knee shield. Yep. The guy drove in. And, and you let it go. And you let it go. Yeah, so like, is that, that's, that's it, Which again gets that forward momentum. Forward going. momentum. I've got this. As yeah. soon as you come forward, boom, over you go. And then I find my underhook. So as I come to the top, I'm looking the, uh, for the underhook. I want to try to get as close to Stefan's chest as possible so he can't regain his underhook. If you could re-pummel, now I've got a bit of a problem because you're coming up on your underhook and I've got to deal with it. So... I keep my biceps and my shoulder close to your chin and I connect my head to the ground and to your head so that I'm breaking your posture and my shoulder is basically underneath your chin. And you can see that my right knee is already protruding past your thigh so I'm not worried about you being able to knee torque me or catch me in a significant half guard. I can now collect an underhook on this side or an overhook, it doesn't really matter. And I can lift my knee, transfer it back across and move immediately into a knee cut pass. So if I time this correctly, because my knees are in front of your thighs, when I sweep you, I'm beating your most of your half guard. And if I don't, then at least I know the twist sweeps are possible and I shouldn't just get, because we actually do a drill uh, at our academy, which is to help people with the twist sweep, where we basically do like a square dance. I sweep you, and then I put my knee inside of your half guard, and you immediately sweep me, and we continue on and on, so people can just feel where the momentum in this position exists so they can avoid it being done to them once they do it to somebody else. So this is a really, really powerful uh, sweep mechanism. So it's not, again, I, we don't want you to think of it as a technique. It can come from any position where you've got this configuration and you get someone to come forward, whether they're driving their underhook or you're catching their wrist or their elbow and pulling them forward. And even if you don't succeed, this is the great thing about how well this connects to the series that we're working on, even if I just do this and you plant your hand, I've now got that underhook opportunity 
that I maybe wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So if you're just really conservative and there's no way I can not sit giving up you in, the in Not the, giving you the underhook. Yeah, and then I go like that. Giving you the underhook. Uh, and then I go back to work. So we can use the twist sweep by itself as an offensive tool, or we can use it as a distraction to create the opening to give us our underhook.